All right, fellas, I'm out here in the garage this morning. Boy, I tell you what, it's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining. It's supposed to get up, I think, in the low 50s today. But the wind is going to be 10 to 15 mile an hour with, uh, I think, 25 mile an hour gust. So I had planned to get out in the front yard today and uh, get the lawnmower out and suck up the last of the leaves off my Bradford pear out there. But I just, I'm not going to get out there in this heavy wind. Uh, that'll make for a cool day for me and... Uh, uh, the leaves just blowing everywhere. So I opted to come out here in the garage and uh, get some things done and make a video. So let's go over here. I'm going to show you all something. I was on Flea Bay checking everything out. I always go there and look at the models that are uh, up for sale. And I got in one of the auctions and they took my bid. I had the highest bid, which was actually a good bid. I'm going to show you all here on the computer. Let's go over here. Uh, let me turn this radio down. I'm out here jamming out. That, let me show y'all. That, that radio, that's, uh, uh, I got that off the old interweb a few years back. I think those radios are designed for like motorcycles. It, it's really small. You can tell I put my hand here. It's really small. And uh, I got speakers. There's one there, man on the wall, and I got another one right yonder. And it does a good job. All right, let's get over here. I'm getting sidetracked, damn. All right, here's what I won. 41 Willie Street Rod. <laughs> Boy, that is just killer looking. I got this for 19 bucks, fellas. I think that's a pretty good deal. Now, I got another one right there that I bought at one of the car shows, but uh, this is old school type gasser. That, that's the old kit that's molded in blue and has the opening doors. I'm just not a big fan of opening doors. And this one is the street rod, and I, I kind of like this a little bit better. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like my gassers, but uh, this is pretty cool. But anyway, got that sucker right there for 19 bucks, so it is in the workings to be on its way here to the garage. All right, let's go over here. See what we got going on on the bench here, fellas. First up, I got my Christmas card in from old Tom, Rammer 69. Oh, I tell you what. Check that. I don't think Santa needs that reindeer up front because that old hot rod has got plenty of deer power to move him along there. But I'll tell you what, that's, that's just pretty cool, Tom. I, I appreciate that. And uh, you and your wife have a, and your family have a very Merry Christmas as well. I just dig those cards, man. Cool looking. Appreciate it, Tom. All right. Let's take a look here, boys. Here's the 41 Chevy. I got it painted. Y'all watched my other video. I got that sucker painted the other day. And yesterday morning I got out here. The weather was really nice. The weather was actually better yesterday than it is today. And uh, I thought it would be a good day to get some clear on here. Now, let me go back here just a little bit. Uh, sometime back here, I changed my, uh, on my airbrush. I changed the way that I do things. Uh, I was using the .3 spray tip. And I was mixing my paints and clear and everything 50-50. And sometime back here, I switched uh, my mixture to a two-to-one mix, uh, two parts paint and one part thinner. And I switched to the 0.5 spray tip. And it worked out well. And, and I shot that one that way, and that came out really nice. I really liked the way that paint and everything went on. But now on this one... The clear, I still use my old method of 50-50 uh, and shooting it with the .3 tip at about 20-25 PSI. But since I've switched to the 5 tip, I spray, I set my compressor at 30 PSI and it, it'll, you know, when you hit the trigger, it'll, uh, it'll go down a little bit, maybe 22-23, but I, I initially set it at 30. So I did my clear the same way. I wanted to try to make sure uh, it was going to do okay. And I tell you, I don't know if I like the way this came out with that bigger tip in the in the different paint mix. Uh, I guess time will tell when I get some wet sanding done and get it polished. But I'll get it up here and show you guys. It uh, it's got some orange peel in it. Hard to tell, but there you might be able to see a little bit there. I don't know. Uh, boy, I tell you, uh, with that change, everything changed. Uh, it, 
it went on. Of course, it's going to go on heavier, and uh, I think this is about five or six coats, and I let it flash uh, three to five minutes between coats. I normally don't do that either, but that's what I've been doing with my paint. Uh, when I switch to that five tip and a two, two, two to one mix, I'll spray it and then let it flash out for five minutes in between coats. So, I don't know. I think the jury is still out on that one there. So, but anyway, I, uh, fellas, I did, I got it painted and got the clear on it. And I'm glad I got that done. It's been in the dehydrator for 10 hours, but it still feels a little, it, to me, it just doesn't feel totally cured out. And, and, uh, I've had that issue for some time with this X22. To me, is X22 clear? It just never does feel like it's totally cured out. But uh, I think the last few times that I've used this, I've, I've been putting the bodies in the dehydrator for at least uh, 15 to 20 hours and then letting it sit for a couple days. And that seems to be doing the trick, I guess. You know, I, I just, I probably wasn't letting anything sit long enough to cure out. And, and I know that's probably the problem. So like I said, this has been in the dehydrator for about 10 hours. And when I get done with this video, it's gonna go back in for another 10 hours. And then I'll let it set for a couple of days and we'll we'll get after it with the wet sanding and polishing and see how she turns out. But that's I think it's just looking killer. Now, I want to say one more thing here before I jump off this. Initially, I was not going to put the bumpers on here. But with that darker gray, uh, I think I need as much chrome as I can get to kind of tone that color down just a little bit, you know, to... We'll see. Uh, I did a little mock-up this morning, and things are kind of tight uh, after painting. So I got a little bit of cleanup to do and, and uh, taking care of some fit issues, with, especially with the wheels and tires. They were already snug to begin with. So uh, anyway, here's the 51 Henry J I've been working on, fellas. And I'm going to tell you what, this, that's my first resin body. That's a Jimmy Flintstone body. I showed this in my other video. Uh, I've got the, let me show you here, I, I got the pan and the firewall, I've got it glued together and I've got it where it fits up in there really nice as far as the length and getting this firewall uh, in, the, in the, which I think is the proper location, I don't really know, but I'm having trouble now with the, these door panels, these door panels uh, on the kit the door panels actually fit inside the opening doors. Of course, now this one doesn't have opening doors, so I've got to fit these door panels in without the doors. So I had to, I've already been working on one, one of them here pretty good. I added about 3 16 of an inch to the bottom of each door panel, and then I'm going to fill in these spots here where the hinges used to be for the, for the kit. And then I think the, the section right up here is gonna fit up there where it should, just right at the edge of the bottom of that door, or the bottom of the window. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use these. These are for the, uh, uh, where the back seat would be for the door panels back there. But I tell you, this body is so daggone thick and in that area back there, back here, where they would normally go, it is so thick and the angle is so different back there that. Uh, I'd have to cut away so much of that. I don't know if it'd be worth using them or not, but you won't be able to see a whole much, a whole lot in there anyway. So, uh, but I'd really like to get those in there, but I'm getting there with her. And then the next thing is the, that daggone chassis is not fitting up to the bottom of that pan, uh, like it should from, I think from about here on back, it's got areas here, right there. It's got little notches and right here and those fit down on some pins that are on the bottom of that pan. And this whole back section from here to there, it just doesn't want to sit down at all. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get out the heat gun and do a little bending on that, I think. But it's coming along. I've, I've still got a lot of sanding to do on this body. i tell you what, there, <laughs> I don't think you can ever get done with the sanding on this sucker, but I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting close, fellas. But after I'm out on that, uh, 
I was having trouble with trying to find an engine to fit down in there. Uh, well, I can get the engines in there. It's the headers that are giving me issues uh, hitting the, the frame here. And I, I seem to have that issue every time. I just don't have any headers that uh, will either slip down inside the frame or slip outside the frame. But I found, I had this Iceman engine. I showed this in my last video, I think. It's a big block Chevy. And look at those headers. They fit nice and close, or kind of tucked into the block there. And I did a little bit of a trial fit, and I think those are actually gonna fit inside the chassis. I mean, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of modifications in here. I've gotta cut out those original uh, motor mounts. But I think that's gonna fit in there. So I decided to go ahead and start painting up some of the engine. I'm gonna get that engine built and then get it in there and see what it looks like but i'm 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 hoping it's going to look okay but boy i tell you what let me show you all something look at that engine and that's going to be sitting up in there that's going to just look killer i just think that's going to look killer sticking out of there <laughs> of course y'all know i'm making this into a gasser so i think it's going to look pretty cool here's the rest of the stuff for the 41 uh, I'm pretty much done. There's the I, I ended up pulling the bumpers out because uh, Like I said, I think that that's just so much gray That I need I need some more chrome on her to help tone down that gray Because I think it's just a little bit too much But I think once I get that Caramel interior in there and get the get the wheels on with the cut with the chrome and stuff uh, I think it's going to look all right. And as far as the wheels, uh, you know, they're already, I don't remember what I used these on, but that's a gun metal that I painted the inside with. But I'm going to go ahead and repaint the inside of that with this German gray. I think that'll look pretty good. All right, fellas, uh, I think I'm about done here. I just want to give you all a update on where I'm at. I got finally got the paint on the 41 and... Um, Making a little headway on the 51 Henry J. And boy, I'll tell you what, I normally don't build two at once, but tag on it, when I got that 51 Henry J in it, I just, I just had to start on that sucker because it looks so cool. But uh, there's a chassis sitting back there. It's all, it's all ready to go. All right, fellas, I think I'm going to cut you loose here. Uh, I think this video is getting just a little bit too long. Uh, I'm getting kind of bored. So, uh, all right, I'm out of here.